Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the notes on graphs of exponential functions. At the end of this, you should be able to say, I can sketch the graph of exponential functions using asymptotes and points. Okay, so um, we can sketch the graph of an exponential function using these three things. The horizontal asymptote, the y-intercept, and at least two other points. Okay, so using that idea there, let's try this example two here. Sketch the graph of the following functions and state the domain and the range. All right, so we got y equals three to the x minus two. This right here is our horizontal asymptote. Okay, so down here at uh, negative two, we're going to have an asymptote. So that means that graph is going to get really close to that line, um, but is never going to actually hit that line, right? Or can get really close to that line, but will never touch that line. Okay. <clears throat> now, the other thing we we're looking for was the y-intercept. We know what the y-intercept is when x equals zero, right? So we're going to do y equals three to the zero minus two so anything to the zero power remember that's one minus two so our y-intercept is negative one right like that okay and then <clears throat> excuse me it also says find two other points so let's plug in a couple of nice points that will make our life easy, right? So probably one would be a nice one, right? Y equals three to the first minus two. So that's gonna be three minus two, which is just one. So we have the point, so it gives us, let's do this down here. That gives us the point one, positive one, right? Yep, I don't know why I put negative on there, sorry. Because again, we plugged in one and out came one. So we've got one, one. And then maybe let's try, you can tell things are going like this. It's, it can't come down here and cross through that. So we know it's going to slide off that way. Let's just try two, because that'll probably be a little bit nicer. Y equals three squared minus two. So that's going to be Y equals nine minus two. So that's Y equals seven. So now we have the point two and seven two and seven <clears throat> and this graph should hopefully look a little bit familiar because we just did this graph on the eight b notes on using a table okay so we kind of use this table here so now we want to sketch this we know this is going to come down and get close to this but never hit this so we're just going to kind of draw this line in here like this and it's going to come up here and kind of go like that. I missed the points, but you get the idea. Okay. Uh, let's try this. Y equals 3 to the negative x minus 2. So our asymptote is still at negative 2. All right. So we still have this horizontal asymptote here at negative 2. Now let's also find when we plug 0 in for x, so we get y equals 3 to the negative 0 minus 2. So 3 to the negative 0 is still the same um, as 3 to the positive 0, which means this is 1 minus 2. So we know that y equals negative 1. Okay, so the y-intercept is at negative 1, which look is the same as this over here. Now let's see what happens when we plug in. Again, a nice, probably easy number would be two. So we get, or negative, or po sorry, positive one. So y equals three to the negative one, because it's negative x minus two, right? So that's one third, three to the negative first, if you'll remember, is the same thing as one over three to the positive first. So that's one third minus two. So that gives us y equals negative 2 plus a third is negative 1.67. So at 1, we're at negative 1.67. So now we're going down here. So now it looks like it's going to flatten out that way. Let's see what happens when we put in negative 1. So y equals 3 to the negative, because it's negative x, so it's negative, negative 1 minus 2. So that's really y equals 3 to the 
first minus 2, so that's y equals 3 minus 2, y is 1. So negative 1, 1 is another point, along with 1 and negative 1.67. Right, so negative 1 is at positive 1. So look, this negative here, the positive exponent there turned into a negative exponent here, just makes the graph now go down and to the right, right there. Okay. Oh, forgot to state the domain and range. That's pretty important. So let's go back to this here, domain. We normally do as D and then the range we will say as r. So, domain. Domain is what the x's can be. So this thing can go forever and ever to the left, and it's still moving, though ever so slightly, to the right. So that means the domain on this thing is going to be all real numbers. The range, <clears throat> remember we've got this asymptote here. This will never cross negative 2, right? So we know that um, the y value is going to have to be greater than negative 2. It can't equal negative 2 because that's an asymptote, right? Um, so y has to be greater than negative 2. That's the range, okay? And just so that this kind of helps out, this is this really helped me understand a lot better about asymptotes. Um, this, no matter what we put in for this x here, we will never get 0. 0 will never be an option. So you will... So in this function here, we will never have 0 minus 2. That's why minus 2 is an asymptote, because we know that negative 2 for our, will never be our y value, because this will always give us some kind of, um, some kind of value. Okay? And also, since it's 3 to some power, whether it's positive power or negative power, this will always be positive. That's why it's, it will never be 2, but it's always going to be greater than negative 2. Sorry. Not 2, but negative 2. Okay? This one over here, domain and range. So the domain for this here, it goes forever, forever and ever to the right. It also goes forever and ever to the left, ever so slightly, but that means it's still all real numbers. And then the range here is still going to be y is greater than negative 2, because it's all up above this negative 2 line. Okay? All right. Um, one last thing here, example three, but before we do that, let's take a quick little video comedy break. What's in the box? Oh my goodness. Does that smell amazing? Why are you shaking? Are you that excited about bacon? Are you that excited about bacon? Do you want the bacon? Do you All right. <clears throat> I would uh, definitely like to believe that that dog hopefully at least got a piece of that bacon because that would just be mean if he didn't. Um, all right. Example three. The graph shows the curve y equals k times 2 to the x plus c. So that is multiplication sign right there. Let's put a dot in there so it's not confusing where k and c are constants. Find the value of k and of c. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the thing. We know that this here is always going to be the horizontal asymptote, right? So good news is, look, we can see right here that I'm pretty sure that that horizontal asymptote is going to be 1. So we know that c equals 1. Okay? And then now we're going to find this value of k. So we've got 2 to the x. So we know so far we got y equals k times 2 to the x plus 1, right? So we know also that if we plug in 0, we're going to get 4, right? So this point right here is 0, 4. So if we plug in 0 for x, we're going to get 4 for y, right? So 4 equals k times 2 to the 0 plus 1. That's 2 to the 0. Okay, so 4 equals k to 2 to anything to the 0 power is always 1. k times 1 plus 1, right? So subtract 1 from both sides, and we get 3 equals k times 1 is just k. So we now know that k is 3, 
C is 1. So um, it says find the value of K and C. We found those. Let's actually write it back into this equation so we can better understand it. We get Y equals 3 times 2 to the X plus 1. Okay. So just to kind of double check, if we were to plug in 1, we should get 7 for y, right? So 7 equals 3 times 2 to the first plus 1. Let's see if this works. Three, 2 to the first is just 2. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1. 7 equals 7 indeed. So we know that we have those. Uh, we got our c and our k right. Okay. All right, that's all there is for graphs of exponential functions. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.